made it! <laughs> we made it! <laughs> Mercury, look! <laughs> it's so beautiful! <laughs> Everybody, we are finally out of 2020. Thank goodness. I am confident that 2021 is going to be a better year than 2020 was. I mean, pretty much any year could be better than 2020 was, right? So in today's video, we are going to be talking about bearded dragons and bearded dragon care. And I'm gonna tell you guys how I take care of my bearded dragon and how my care has changed since 10 years ago. Bearded dragons are native to Australia and they enjoy hot, arid environments and they live in like the deserts and shrublands. So what makes bearded dragons so popular? Well, the first thing that makes them so popular is their temperament. They aren't very cranky lizards. This is pretty much what you're gonna get out of a bearded dragon when you get one. Mercury here, I, I don't handle too often. I, I handle him very minimally compared to other people who I know who own bearded dragons. But as you can see, he's pretty calm and he's pretty chill. He's probably the most squirrely bearded dragon I've ever had and that I've ever seen anybody have. At some point in this video, I'm sure he'll run away from me, try to jump off of me, but that's the most that's gonna happen. You're not really gonna have to worry about getting bit too much. If it was to bite you, it's gonna show you some signs that's gonna bite you before it does. A defense mechanism of bearded dragons is to puff up that chin and, and it turns all black and that's kind of where they get that name, bearded dragons, because they'll puff it out and make themselves look bigger and flatten out their bodies and then that whole underside of their chin turns, turns jet black. Even if you do get bit by a bearded dragon, the bite isn't too severe. Might cause you to bleed a little bit, but, but nothing too major, no major damage is gonna happen. It's not like getting bit by a monitor lizard. Whether you handle it every day or don't handle it every day, when you take it out and put it on you, this is pretty much what you're gonna get. You're gonna have a little pal that's just gonna chill with you and, and, and wanna hang out with you and, and, and absorb that warmth that's coming from your body. So that's, that's a pretty cool thing about Bearded Dragon. I just wanna take this time really quick to ask you guys, if you guys are watching this video and you are not subscribed to the channel, if you could please hit that subscribe button and click that notifications bell so you are sure to not miss out on any videos that I post. I would greatly appreciate it. So because their temperament is so good, that kind of goes with the next category that I'm gonna talk about, which is their handleability. Their handleability is great. These are amazing lizards to be able to handle and the, one of the easiest lizards to be able to handle. Bearded dragons are one of the best lizards to handle and I feel completely comfortable handing off any bearded dragon to children and not worrying about that child hurting that bearded dragon. Something like a leopard gecko or an African fire skink or a crescent gecko, they're really small and they can seem really fragile and 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 when you give it to it, hand it to a child, they can be really squirmy. Bearded dragons aren't like that. They're, they're a lot bigger, they're a lot more sturdy. When they're babies, yes, they're gonna be a little bit more flighty, but as adults, they, they can be really chill and just hang out and I've never handed off a bearded dragon to anybody worried that something was going to happen to it. So as I said in the very beginning of the video, these lizards like heat. And heating is very, very, very important for the activity of your lizard and your bearded dragon. I see you trying to escape from me right now. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, he's gonna jump off me here in a sec. So heating is highly important for your lizard and these lizards like high heat. For the basking spot, in anywhere between 100 degrees and 110 degrees. And you want the warm side of your enclosure to be, uh, I'd say about 85 degrees and the cooler side to be about 75 degrees. That's kind of how I keep my enclosure. Give my lizard, give Mercury here uh, some different options of, of, of where to go in her enclosure when she, whether she wants to get heat, whether she wants to cool down. 
she has a lot of options. And I think that's really, really, really important. There she goes, there he goes. Why? Why? We can't just be buddies right now? In my opinion, what you wanna to use to heat your bearded dragon's enclosure is either a ceramic heat emitter or a Repti Sun Bowl. I think those are the best two choices that you have. Bearded dragons like to bask, and so you wanna give them something that they can bask underneath. As far as humidity goes, this is one of those things where I think people get kind of mixed up because they think that the bearded dragon is is a strictly desert species and so they think they don't need any humidity at all and i can say that for a while i believe that was true too my previous bearded dragon that i owned spike um i had him and i never sprayed his cage i never soaked him uh, anything because i thought that since he was a desert species he did not need any type of humidity which is not true these lizards actually do best when their humidity is between 30 to 40 percent they actually enjoy getting soaked and taking little baths um, i don't soak mercury but what i do do is i spray him with a spray bottle and he loves it every time i spray him with a spray bottle he tries to climb up to the top of his branches and just goes up there and lifts his head up these lizards enjoy water Water and they need that hydration so make sure you have a fresh bowl of water in their cage at all times and make sure that their cage doesn't dry out too too much they do need some type of humidity I've watched some care guides and stuff where people have said that they don't put uh, bowls of water in their cage to make it because it makes their humidity go up too too high I I don't know where that's come from I don't I, I don't do that you can choose, this is why I make this care guide, because you can choose whether you want to follow that or not. I wouldn't recommend it though. I think that your bearded dragon, pretty much any animal that you have, always needs some type of fresh water source available to them. Bearded dragon diet. Now this is an aspect of their care that changed for me a lot from my last bearded dragon to this one, which was about a 10 year difference almost. So bearded dragon diet is something that makes them a little bit more difficult than other species of lizards. Bearded dragons have an appetite. When they're young, they will eat every day, twice a day. As adults, they will eat every day to every other day and you have to feed them like that in order for them to grow to their full potential and to grow correctly as babies they're going to eat almost strictly insects they're going to be almost 100 percent insectivores a little bit of greens and and fruits and vegetables here and there but mainly insects crickets doobie roaches hornworms wax worms mealworms and it's going to cause them to grow really, 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 really fast. Mercury here is not even a year old yet and he is almost full grown. It's crazy the amount of growth that these lizards go through. If you do want a lizard that 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 gets to its full grown size and you don't have to wait forever for it, Bearded Dragon is perfect for you because they grow really fast. So as babies, they're gonna eat almost strictly insects and then as adults, their diet pretty much switches to where they eat mostly greens, and vegetables, and fruits and then insects are kind of supplemented in there. So the way I look at it is I kind of give Mercury, now that he's an adult, I give Mercury greens, set, hey, you're about to do it again, aren't you? I know, I see you. I'll go get you again. I give Mercury greens probably about 65% of the time and insects about 35% of the time. When he was a baby, I would probably give him insects about 75% of the time, and then greens and fruits and vegetables about 25% of the time. Make sure the greens you give are dark leafy greens, like collard greens, maybe a little bit of kale, mustard greens are really good, dandelion greens. I give mercury a staple of collard greens and mustard greens, and then I'll supplement some, some dandelion greens in there as well, along with some squash, uh, zucchini, carrots, then bananas for fruit, strawberries. I don't really give too much fruit because it's really high in sugar. So fruit's kind of more like a treat. And then as far as insects go, Mercury's staple is Dubia roaches for sure is her favorite. Um, hornworms I give every now and then, and mealworms I give as well. The mealworms, I try not to give too much because of their hard shell. I used to give Mercury crickets, but I don't like, it's too hard to grab crickets with the tongs. And if you dump the crickets in the cage, there's gonna be that one cricket that just stays alive. I've had one in there for like 
I feel like it's been like two months that it's been in there and it has not died and it chirps every night and drives me insane. So, yeah, crickets, you can, I, I'd rather give crickets when they're younger, but, so I know he doesn't really get crickets as much anymore because of that reason. But if you want rogue crickets in there, just don't say I didn't warn you about this. And so the way that that's changed for me in my care was that when I had my last bearded dragon, I thought they were strictly insectivores. And so my bearded dragon ate pretty much 100% insects all the time, crickets and doobie roaches and mealworms. And I did not know that. Luckily for me, my bearded dragon lived a long, healthy life about 10 years, but I had no idea that they needed those greens in their diet. Okay, so trigger warning, because now we're going to get into a, a very heated debate with bearded dragon enthusiasts, and that is the substrate that you need to use for your bearded dragon. <laughs> My care in this field has changed a lot over the years as well. Do you use a loose substrate? Do you use a, a, a non-loose substrate? What do you use? I've heard so many people say so many different things. And so I hear people debate it all the time. Do you use loose substrate? Do you use non-loose substrate? What do you use? What do you keep your bearded dragon on? What's good for them? What's not? And I am here to tell you, it doesn't matter if you use loose substrate or not, as long as you're using the right loose substrate. It really doesn't. I get it, people will fear for their animal's health. They, they fear for impaction. I understand all of these things. Me, personally, I am somebody who, li who likes to keep my bearded dragon on loose substrate. That's just how it is. I like to give my bearded dragon that more natural feel. I'm not knocking anybody who uses newspaper or who uses tile. I use newspaper right now for my rhino iguana. I have nothing against that. I think it just looks ugly, but that's a different story. So back 10 plus years ago, I used to put my bearded dragons on loose crushed up walnut shells, which is like the worst type of substrate that you can use. I know that now, but I didn't know that back then. But my bearded dragon still lived a full healthy life and died from natural causes. So I understand the concern about loose substrates, but if you do it right and if you feed your lizards on a dish and don't feed them directly on the substrate or you feed them from tongs when you're feeding them insects, they should be fine. They're not ingesting that, that substrate. I don't use crushed walnut shells anymore. I don't recommend that anybody do. I've learned now how bad they actually are. What I do use now is a mixture of eco earth and some soil. So I use a mixture of soil so that it cuts in on that eco earth and doesn't make the enclosure so dusty. But I've used the eco earth and soil mixture and it's been, it's worked out great. And it gives my lizard that natural feel and I never feed my, my lizard directly on the substrate. I, if it's insects, I'm always feeding off tongs. And if it's fruits and vegetables, I have a dish that it always goes on. I don't think it's that big of a deal if somebody wants to put their lizard on a loose substrate or if somebody wants to put their lizard on tile or newspaper. Either way is fine. Your way isn't the number one way that everybody has to do it, the universal way. There is no universal way that everybody has to take care of their animal. If you don't do it that way, it's gonna die. No, that's not how things work. People can have different care ways to take care of their animals and, and it could still work out, except for walnut shells. Walnut shells, still don't use those. Or calcium sand, don't use that either. Those are two horrible substrates. But other than that, use what you want. So this is another thing that might turn people off from bearded dragons, that is their enclosure size. For such a small lizard, they need a pretty big enclosure size. Minimum, you're talking a 75 gallon. Uh, that's what I have mercury in. This was, the 75 gallon was the cage that I had mercury in since he was a baby and he's grown into it. Eventually, I wanna be able to put him in about a 120 gallon. That's Hopefully at some point this year, I'll upgrade him into that. 75 gallons can work. He can live in that cage for his whole life, but that would be giving him the minimum. And so that's not really what my goal is when I have animals to give him the minimum. 
Um, so eventually I will upgrade him into a bigger enclosure, a 120 gallon enclosure or something like that. Just for reference, a 75 gallon tank is a four foot by two foot by two foot tank. A 120 gallon tank I believe is like a six foot by two foot by two foot tank. Just for reference in case you guys don't really go by gallons and you go by the, the length of the cage, that's kind of the dimensions. Uh, the dimensions between the two. I just want you guys to take a note because as I'm going to be showing you my setup in my enclosure, I want you guys to understand that this was what I got him in the beginning and that this isn't the ideal setup. There are things about his enclosure that I have him in that you, sh I don't recommend that you follow and I think that you should change and it's something that I'm going to change. So the first thing is, is that he's in a glass enclosure. If you guys have watched my channel, you should know that I am not a fan of glass enclosures. I despise them. I despise glass enclosures, especially when they only open from the top. And that is the enclosure that I have Mercury in. Now, it worked when he was small, but as he's getting bigger, I, I, I need to get a front opening enclosure, um, preferably PVC or a vision cage because just Glass enclosures, they don't hold heat well, they get cold at night, uh, opening from the top, your your reptile, your lizard, your snake, whatever it is, is getting scared because they've seen something huge come up from above them. It just, it's not ideal. As you're watching this and you're looking at my, my setup, I would say don't follow this exactly, just kind of take what you can from it and, and make it your own because it's not perfect. Bearded dragons are semi-arboreal, so they like to have some space to climb. So you're gonna wanna give them some room to climb up on things. You're gonna wanna put a lot of branches in there that they can climb up on and bask on in the wild. They like to bask on top of rocks or on top of branches and in the direct sunlight and get that heat. You wanna simulate that as much as possible in their enclosure. You wanna make sure you give them a few hides. Mercury has never, ever in his life used one of his hides. I have two hides in his enclosure. He has not used them once, ever. He sleeps right on his basking branch and just kind of plops down there. And it's so funny watching him sleep with his feet dangling off the sides of the branch. UVB, you must have a UVB light. That is one of the most essential things that you could have for your bearded dragon. They need that UVB light to, to grow properly and to get the correct bone growth. If you do not have that UVB light, they can develop uh, bone deformities and, and, and bone diseases and just different problems that you don't wanna have to deal with. So make sure that you get a UVB light. And last but certainly not least, the cost of these lizards and the availability of these lizards. You're gonna find these lizards everywhere. They, you will not go into a pet store, whether it's Petco, PetSmart, a reptile store, wherever, you're gonna see these lizards everywhere online. If you're watching this video, that probably means that you've seen one before and you like it and you wanna go out and get one. So you can find them anywhere, you already know that. Morphs, they have a thousand different morphs. Mercury, I forgot what his morphs are honestly, but he's red. I know that, he's red. I forgot what his morphs are. Um, okay, well, if I remember, I'll put it up here somewhere. And they're not that expensive. Even the morphs aren't that expensive when compared to other lizards and other snakes. They really aren't. You can buy a normal bearded dragon for about $20. $40 on the higher end. Um, different morphs could go all the way up to the thousands, but realistically, you can get a morph like this for about $150. So they really aren't that expensive. In all honesty, I'm gonna say you're probably gonna spend about $10 a week, maybe $20 a week feeding these guys, which I guess is a little pricey, but not too bad. If you want a, a, a lizard that you can handle, that you can interact with, that has a personality, that isn't too expensive, then I would say get a bearded dragon. They are amazing. I would recommend a bearded dragon to almost everyone who is thinking about getting one. Do it, get one, do it, just do it.
So that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know Mercury did not enjoy this video because he kept trying to get away from me. Do you agree with my care guide? Do you disagree with my care guide? Let me know your opinions in the comments. So make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I know I say this all the time, but please share this video. Bring some people over to this channel and let's start a conversation about reptiles. Until next time, everybody, my name is Pierce Lavalley. This is Mercury, this is Pierce's planet, and remember, it's all about the reps, baby. Ain't that right? Peace. Oh, shit, god damn it. There he goes again. God! Oh yeah, UVB. You need to have... I know that now.